I have a few aims for this video. One, I want you to know what the marching cubes algorithm is and how it's used. I want you to know what a mesh is and what it consists of within the Unity game engine. I want you to know what Perl and noise is. And I want you to know how these ideas can come together to produce 3D levels within the Unity game engine. So, marching squares. But I said marching cubes earlier, didn't I? Well, how does the marching squares algorithm work? It's a square, and those, that square has four corners. Each of those corners has a value associated with it. So say it can be either be inside the mesh or outside the mesh. So say this corner up here was inside the mesh. Well, I could give that a binary value because four corners, that could be, that could be represented as a four bit binary number like this. And hey ho, you have a binary number of one and this square you could consider it having a configuration of one. A value that is on and a corner that is off. The point the point between it is in, considered inside the shape and part of the, one of the corners of the shape. So between one and eight is the corner of the shape you're trying to create of the larger shape. And between one and two is another corner of a larger shape that you're trying to create using multiple squares. If I increase the value to 3, so I include this corner inside the mesh as well, then it draws a line straight through. So this between 1 and 8 is inside the mesh, and between 2 and 4 is inside the mesh, and hey ho, the value has increased to 3, and so on, and so on. So for configuration 15, all the points are inside the mesh, so there's no value so there's no shape drawn throughout the square because there's no points where there is an off point so there's nowhere to draw a line but how can this be made 3d well make it make it a cube instead of a square you can represent the extra corners with binary just extra four bits of binary because in a square, there's only four corners, but as a cube, it only has an extra four corners, so it can just be represented as an 8-bit binary number. And because it's an 8-bit binary number, that means there's 255 possible configurations for that cube, depending on which corners are in or outside of the mesh. But what is a mesh? Well, a mesh, in Unity at least, is an array vertices and an array of integers. So the vertices array is considered three points in space, that's it. And those three points in space are what make up the corners of the shape you're trying to create. You then use an array of integers called a triangle array. What that does is you indicate which um, indices of the vertices array are considered the triangles that should be drawn. So what you could do is say this was for this example 0 1 2 so 0 0 0 0 0 1 and 1 0 0 those are three points in space the computer does not know what to do with them but with the triangles you put 0, 1, 2, so the first point in the array, the second point in the array, and the third point in the array. What that's doing is it's telling Unity that a triangle should be drawn from here to here to here in that order. And what that triangle does is it lets you see a triangle in the world. And using multiple triangles, you can join them up in various many different ways to create a large polygon shape that is the cornerstone of computer graphics and using a triangle table you can put in the configuration of a cube because as we said earlier the squares and the cubes in marching squares and marching cubes have configurations based on which corners are inside the cube 
So using this, we can pass an integer configuration to a triangle table, which is a large list of these triangle arrays for the different configurations. It will pass back a triangle array telling you how to join up the different edges of the cube together for that configuration. So when I was developing the tool, using the same principles as before, we're using the 8-bit binary number, I generated, I created a system where it would generate a single cube and you could loop through all the configurations to see if there was any missing triangles or open faces, anything like that, just to make sure the configurations were completely correct. Now if I press enter, you can see it loops through all the different configurations. So when this corner is on and this corner is on, all these vertices are joined up. When those three corners are on, all those vertices are joined up. Now, what is Perlin noise? Perlin noise is a function for structured noise where you pass in an x, y or z coordinate to indicate in a point in what in space and it returns a structured value, coherent value for that place. And what is a height map? Well, a height map is basically what this piece of code is doing. It loops through a certain number of points and then it returns a value. And when you put that value into a texture, it looks like this. So the black areas are where it's zero and the, the very white areas are where it's getting closer to one. How can this be used in terrain generation, you may ask? Well, when you stretch out the height map, it can look like this and it can be used to generate different interesting features for the terrain. The higher areas will make interesting hills and wavy patterns and so, so and so. And this can be used to procedurally and endlessly generate as much terrain and as much features as you want. You just have to generate a height map with Perlin noise. But how do I put these ideas together uh, to generate a more interesting level, you may ask? Do I use a height map? Kind of. I use a 3D grid of values. So each of these I generate a 3D Perlin noise value for each of these points in space. So essentially got many height maps stacked on top of each other. But one thing that is very useful, it being a 3D grid, is that you may notice they kind of look like cubes, the different points when you look, look at them joined up together. And that is where it becomes interesting because this allows is where the marching cubes algorithm comes in because say this say this point had a very large value and was considered inside the mesh because it has has a large value then oh that point that can use that can be used to generate some terrain and if we go up and up and up say there was a 2d height map at the bottom that told all these values up to here to be inside the mesh. Well, because it's also a cube and all these points can be changed, if we add some extra 3D noise, some 3D Perlin noise like this, that allows us to create overhangs and caves and tunnels that just using a flat 2D plane and stretching it would not allow you to do with just a 2D height map. That is what is so powerful about the Marching Cubes algorithm because it allows you to do so much more stuff with 3D and procedural generated terrain. But how does this all look when using it? Well, with my system, I've created a specialized U Unity Inspector. So where you can change the noise setting so you can have a different seed to create as many different levels as you want. You can add a manual offset I've added a scale value which gives you more control over how flat the terrain is going to be. With a very high scale, you can think of it as you're looking at the map from a very high position. So everything looks flat and everything looks a bit more muddy and less bumpy. 
but when you're a very low scale value everything is a lot more bumpy and you can see a lot more change in the height of the terrain. The level details such as terrain heights and height multiplier allow you to modify how when the mesh is generated how the the noise values generated by Perl and noise will be used in generating the mesh. So the terrain heights animation curve you can use that to decide how how many high values that's going to be so you can manually cut off a lot of the lower values to be even lower than they normally are and what this will do is it will make sure you only have a few hills generating rather than very very bumpy terrain height multiplier what that does is it decides how high the terrain is going to be within each chunk and the system I use to generate my levels is each chunk has its own mesh so and it can be a certain size and it can and then what the level is is the level is made up of a number of these chunks in the X and Z directions so say you wanted a 60 say we kept a chunk size like this this is gonna do 21 by 21 chunks to generate a level and it's going to generate hills at the edge of the level to box the player in. And then the final detail for my inspector is this chunk cube size. Because essentially that is deciding how big each of the cubes and the marching cubes is going to be. So if you make this value a lot higher, that means the resolution is going to be a lot lower. Because it's looking at less points from the noise. If you in decrease this value that's mean it's going to be sampling more points from the noise so it's going to be a lot higher resolution mesh but however because it's a higher resolution mesh it will take longer to generate but using this system you could generate LODs for your level so say you had an endless terrain system very far away chunks could be using a much higher resolution or much lower resolution mesh so it's less straining on the GPU but the, all the chunks very close to the player could have a very high, like very low chunks, very small chunk size to have a very high resolution. And now it is time for a demonstration. And explained before, you can modify these values however you want. Make a very large level, a very much smaller level, and so and so using the chunk system. And if I click generate, uh, by an I in with a chunk a level of five by five with the current chunk size well i'll make the cube size larger so it's lower resolution you see it generates a level like this however if i increase the chunk cube size much higher resolution and you can see it's opened up this underground area because the cubes are able to pick up the higher resolution and if i make it slightly larger generate in the underground areas you see it's like this I change the seed and you can see it's generated a completely different level for your game thank you for watching I hope my video is informative and you have learned about the marching cubes algorithm and how it can be used to generate terrain in unity